I am uh, Titash Chakraborty and I am um, the Institute of Historical Studies Fellow for the academic year 2017-2018. The Institute of uh, Historical Studies has been very kind enough to actually uh, uh, allow me this one year of actually um, turning my dissertation manuscript into um, a completed book manuscript. I finished my dissertation um, PhD at University of Pittsburgh in 2016 and then I went on to teach for a year as a visiting assistant professor at Oberlin College and starting next fall which is fall of 2018 I will be um, an assistant professor at uh, Duke Kunshan University in China. Broadly speaking my fields of interest is South Asia. Um, world history and specifically anything that is related to the social history of the Indian Ocean world. As for my own book project or the book manuscript that I am working on right now, it looks at the English East India Company's labour management um, over the 18th century in a place called Bengal. Now when I say Bengal, I basically mean the area uh, that comprises of present-day Bangladesh and the provinces of West Bengal and Bihar in India. 18th century is a very significant period in Indian history as well as uh, history in British history as well, uh, precisely because um, it was in this particular, uh, by the middle of 18th century that um, the first region in India came under British colonial rule. Um, so, Bengal became the first uh, region that was actually colonized by the English East India Company. And as for the English East India Company, through colonization of Bengal, uh, they became a really important political force through making like you know, uh, uh, their colonial state on Indian soil. And so, they were no longer just a mercantile entity working um, like any other merchant European companies in Asia. So, the workers that I look at uh, or study were extremely mobile workers. So, they moved around a lot and, um, and they were uh, the, so I look at like European sailors and soldiers, I look at boatmen and silk reelers, the boatmen and silk reelers were indigenous workers. So, both European and indigenous workers were very mobile um, and uh, both the English East India Company and other European companies as well as the indigenous state authorities, they had a very like troubling time controlling the uh, physical mobility of these workers in the early 18th century. And the workers, they used flight or desertion from work as a very effective strategy as um, to negotiate their positions for better wages, better working conditions generally vis-a-vis -vis their employers and definitely the English East India Company. Um, so, after colonization or after the English East India Company formed their colonial state in um, Bengal. Um, they passed a number of regulations targeting desertion of flight of workers and hence they criminalized this practice, which as my research shows ha had a very uh, sort of a erosive effect in workers negotiating power in the region. So, in a nutshell what I do is actually see or study um, workers mobility or their physical movement why and how it became such an important issue in the English East India Company's uh, colonial state building process. I was really interested in multiple different topics. My first interest remains in social history of the Indian Ocean world and very interesting works were coming out uh, when I started my PhD project uh, encompassing the 17th, 18th and 19th century Indian Ocean world. So, you had like Claire Anderson's work on Indian Ocean lives and then uh, Katie Ward's um, thinking of the Dutch Empire as an Indian Ocean network of slavery 
um, and then on the other end you have like you know Sanjay Subramaniam and um, Muzaffar Alam's work on um, the sort of the travelogues or the travel narratives uh, by various like Asian actors um, in the obviously in the Persian at world generally. So, I had a big interest in that particular uh, like field, but also I was interested in the new forms of labor histories that uh, were coming out from within South Asian labor history, where the focus was to look at more and more non-traditional workers and to expand the field at least into the early 19th century. Uh, so, when I got deeper into like you know thinking about the 18th century, I figured out like it was a very important period in global history generally, like, because you have uh, the old empires sort of restructuring themselves into new imperial formations and hence uh, you know you have Indi American independence on one side and then expansion of British imperialism on the other, the French going through a revolution, but also restructuring their empire significantly. Uh, so, all this like kind of converged into me thinking like okay, so how did workers in India actually experience this really tumultuous uh, like period. And that is how I started learning Portuguese, Dutch, got into the archives and found the workers there. <laughs> I really want to work on the Dutch East India Company's um, slave trading networks, a social history of their slave trading networks in Indian Ocean between 1600 and 1800. So, it is a broad time frame, but I really want to take that broad time frame so as to write a very a uh, composite social history of slavery and to define the Indian Ocean network in terms of slavery, which is still very I would say um, underdeveloped. I want to concentrate on uh, a few hubs of European um, trade, um, one is Cochin, another is Malabar, uh, Arakan, Bengal and Batavia. So, these would be my main focus areas um, and I would like to look at the mechanisms of slave trade. So, who actually brought the slaves to the local market? So, what were the nexus of slave raiding and slave catching? Um, then obviously, the ethnicities of the slave trade because you know we do have information on that and hence look at the significant demographic transfers within the Indian Ocean region. And finally, slave resistance uh, in the Indian Ocean world. As I said, like you know, our social history of un, of uh, Indian Ocean network uh, through the lens of uh, slavery.